All right, guys, welcome to the q and I'm just walking to the outside office now. Um, yeah, I'm on holiday at the moment, so this is where we would retreat to when we go on holiday. So I'll show you around the, the house quickly. Get me out of the film, that's our boat. House, two cars. Lovely jovely. <laughs> All right, so we're in the outside office today. All right, so my phone's on like 10% battery, so I'm gonna to get to this as quick as I can and try and answer your questions to the absolute best of my ability. So first of all, welcome to the Q&A. Thank you so much to everybody that made this a possibility. Uh, thank you to anyone that asked me a question and I will do my damnedest to answer your questions in the lightning speed time because I'm afraid my phone will die mid-recording. Um, so we're just gonna get into this. Uh, Matej has said, uh, oh, and apologies if I say your name wrong. I'm not well versed in reading a lot of these names. <laughs> uh, so I mean you no offence and please feel free to correct me if I'm not saying your name right. Uh, so question one, Matej, what is the right process after sampling a product? So in this context, I'm assuming you're happy with the product that you have sampled, which means which means you have done your product research and you've done your product sourcing from China, presumably. So the next step, once you've received a sample, if you are happy with that sample, is to go ahead and buy a barcode. So I buy my barcodes from, sorry, excuse me. I buy my barcodes from Speedy Barcodes. Um, so head over to somewhere like Speedy Barcodes, buy some barcodes and send those files over to your supplier. Um, while you're doing this, you will need to um, create your shipping plan because you need to input the barcodes in you know, your UPC codes or EAN, depending on where you're selling, into, into your shipment plan on Seller Central. And then you can uh, send those codes over to your supplier. Once you send them to your supplier, you can arrange your shipping plan. Um, there are a few different things you can do with your shipping. So you can air, air, um, air shipping, sea freight. Depending on which of those two you're doing, there are uh, more variables. So if you're doing sea freight, which most people do for their first order because it's cheaper, um, then what I would recommend is hiring a company that can handle your consignment from start to finish rather than hiring random freight forwarders uh, mid-process. So companies like Flexport and Freightos, they're good people that can handle your entire consignment. Um, so once you've got your shipment plan ready, you need to start thinking about your listing. So make your listing on Amazon and then um, pay for photos, pay for a professional to write your copy for you. Um, then your, your listing, your product lands with Amazon. Once it's with Amazon, then you start your PPC, you start your campaigns, maybe you're advertising on uh, Facebook and Instagram, wherever you're advertising. Once you get enough data, two weeks worth of data, I would say, um, then start um, optimizing your listing because now you're going to have access to the data, what, what's converting, what isn't working. So scrap anything that's not working. If a keyword is converting really well but is eating all of your budget, put that keyword into a negative campaign and then continue your auto campaign without that keyword. Um, but yeah, that's a, that's a general overhaul of the process in order. Um, question number two, Jen. How much is the suggested startup? So I have a video on this, um, which I will link in the description below. Um, but generally speaking, I would advise between five to six thousand um, dollars. The six thousand dollars is if you are buying a course. The five thousand dollars is if you are not buying a course, um, which means I would leave about a thousand dollar budget to buy a decent course. Um, the reason why you need a minimum of five thousand is because. You're gonna to need to have enough to order. Um, I, I've made a, again, I've made a video on how many items you should order for a first order. And that the, the formula works out as you need to be buying enough stock for three months worth of your average sales volume. So I'll link that video in the description below. I don't wanna to get too far into that because like I said, my phone is nearly dead and I don't wanna eat up too much time on that question. Um, Jiang, uh, sorry if I've said that name wrong, please do correct me if it's, if it's not right. Um, you have said, what are the dangers of not registering your brand slash trademark? When should you do it and where to do it in the UK? So simply put, if you don't own your brand, it means you have no legal ownership over it. So what that, um, that basically invites hijackers um, or anyone that wants to come and sell your listing. 
um, they can do that absolutely no worries free if you don't own your product you don't really have a leg to stand on you can't really complain to Amazon about hijackers basically anyone can do anything to your listing and you can't do anything about it also the most damning prospect is someone else can register your product under their name and then you are finished that product is done for that brand is done for because you don't own it um, when should you do it the sooner the better especially if it's a very popular item and you know that a lot of people are going to be looking at it um, for the exact reason we just mentioned you don't want somebody else you don't want hijackers and you don't want somebody else to register your own product um, under their name um, and where to do it in the UK so HMRC all things um, to, related with the government you need to do through HMRC so hmrc.org um, or just type into Google um, HMRC registering a product or a trademark or whatever and it will come up it's a really simple process there's step-by-step -step guides on the HMRC website um, yeah so that <laughs> yeah that will do that question and um, I hope I hope that's answered your question I hope that was in enough detail um, Dimitar I hope I said your name right um, should we aim for break even even after aggressive PPC and other ads or should we try to at least have some margin um, so I think this really means should I, hmm, I mean I can dissect this question a bit a bit better so yes you should absolutely always have some margin whether or not you should see that margin is another question so I personally would say you need to be comfortable not giving yourself a wage from your Amazon business for at least six months um, so Technically, you're breaking even because it means you personally are not receiving any money from it, but your business is in profit because you are putting any profit you get, you're putting back into the business. The reason I say that is because if whatever profit you're getting, you're paying yourself, your business is in a state of um, uh, stagnation. So if that happens, it basically means if you order 500 units and you make profit from that, but you keep that profit, it means the next time you order, you're ordering 500 units again. So you want to be ordering the next order, you want to be ordering 600 or 750 units. And you want to build upon that um, for you know six months to a year until, until the point where maybe you have two or three products and you're ordering 1500 units a time uh, you know, with, each, with each order, then you can start thinking about giving yourself a wage. Um, again, I have, a, I have a, a video on how to pay yourself a wage, what wage you should be on, based on the tax brackets, how to avoid certain taxes. So please uh, watch that video if you haven't already, I'll link it in the description below. Um, uh, David, hi Jake, just saw your 70,000 a month product. I'm a little confused right now. How do we know what products to enter into and avoid if we're not sourcing products with fewer than 100 reviews? Okay, so this is a great question. Oh, our phone's on 5%, we can do this. Um, so yeah, this is a great question because it's, uh, reasons like this why people are scared to sell on FBA in 2018 and 2019. So a lot of people, and I'm sure you've heard them, have said, oh, FBA is dead, you, you know, you can't make money from Amazon anymore. Uh, and that's a lie. And it's because people still have this um, strict research criteria that was based on the stats from 2016, but people still have those same criteria in 2019. So way back in 2016, Amazon for that year had a net revenue of $136 billion. In 2018, although they haven't released their stats yet, I know for a fact the revenue was over 200 billion. So what that means is that we're dealing with an excess of 70 billion or, or higher revenue for that uh, for, for this year. Um, what that means for you as a seller is that your, your research criteria is drastically different. So, um, don't be basing your search criteria now on the data from 2016. So I'm happy, like I said in one of my other videos, um, the product research video, I'm happy to compete against people with high reviews as long as, they're, um, as, long as there's um, a f only a few sellers with high reviews or if they have high reviews but the, re but the, the rating isn't great. Because if the rating isn't great then you know there's a pain that needs to be, to be met and regardless of how many reviews they have, if the average review is three and a half stars, there's your market. Target that pain and you will make the sales. I always say pain and demand, they're the only two things that I need to look at. If there's demand, good. If there's pain, even better. If there's competitors, but they're not meeting that pain, doesn't matter, the competition is irrelevant. 
and then Yvonne. Um, I would like to know how you can tell if a product is saturated on Amazon. I have no idea what to look for, thank you. So basically, a product is saturated on Amazon if there's too many sellers and if the reviews, if the average review rating is too high. So I would say if there are, if there are 25 or more sellers with uh, an re average review of 4.7 stars or higher, avoid that product. If the criteria is less than that, I would say, generally speaking, you can do some more research around that product and see if that's um, a niche that you can enter. Um, but uh, I'll leave it as that because my phone is literally about to die. I'm sorry it was a quick video. As you, as you guys can tell, I'm, obviously I'm not in my um, home setting today. Um, as you guys know, or maybe you don't know, <laughs> um, I'm on This Is My Holiday Getaway. Uh, we try and come here a few times a year. Um, which means I'm not in my office, I don't have access to my, my video editing software at home. Um, but it's a much needed uh, relaxing holiday <laughs> after a very stressful Christmas. Um, but anyway, enough about me. Thank you guys, as always, um, for tuning into the video. Like I said earlier, thank you for giving me the opportunity to host this Q&A. And thank you so much to anyone that watched my product research video. Um, it's just gone crazy. I'm at... Um, my views get like 40 to 50 views normally and then it's like oh the hype dies off until I make my next video but the views the, the views of my product research video just keep going up I mean I'm near when I last checked I was just over 500 which is literally 10x what I normally do so thank you so much to anybody that contributed to that view count and um, it really means the world to me and I hope you guys can see I'm making a genuine effort to help you guys out because I don't think there was a channel like this back when I started and I want to be that channel for you guys. I want to be the person that you come to, I want to be the videos that you obsess about um, and I want to be the face behind that, that channel and I hope that I am that person for you. And if you have any struggles, please let me know. Uh, comment down below what you thought of the video, comment any more questions because they're going to be weekly Q&As from this point forward um, and like, share, subscribe, uh, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell. Join the Facebook group, it's going to be in the description below and we can have a chat in the Facebook group um, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for tuning in.